mutton dressed up like lamb. What do we mean by this expression? The scripture for this is found in Ephesians 5 verse 1. Therefore be imitators of God, little children. Mutton dressed up like lamb. This is when ministers of the gospel, especially, particularly ministers, who are mature age, try to dress up and present themselves as young people. I mean, if you see like a 60-year-old pastor, 60 years average, trying his best to look like he's a college-age kid in the way he dresses, it's obvious that something is out of kilter. When you find him wearing tight drainpipe pants or wearing torn jeans like the latest teenage fad, sporting hairstyles with uh, hairstyling gel or mousse, that, that actually looks embarrassing for someone who's 60 years and above, uh, let alone unbecoming or inappropriate. For what purpose? For what reason? Is this to identify with the secular world and worldly trends? Really? What's going on here? We are called, as I said earlier, to be imitators of Christ, not imitators of the world. As we just read from Ephesians 5.1, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Now a little caveat. We're not talking about being healthy and fit, not at all. That is to be commended, applauded, respected. In fact, that's a great example of leading from the front. And don't we need more of that among the ministers of the gospel today? But here we are addressing the issue of identifying with the world and worldly trends. We call ourselves the church, but look no different than the world outside. I'll say that again. We call ourselves the church, but look no different than the world. Romans 12 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In many of our church buildings, painting of the interior black to give it a gothic type look, strobe lights, colored swivel lights, fog machines, which actually makes the stage and pulpit look more like a disco than a place of worship. And by the way, you know how that's done? By spending tens of thousands of dollars of church funds, that's love gifts, tithes, offerings, call it by whatever name you wish, using church funds to do so. Hear this, my friend. A strong, clean church attracts Sinners, let me say that again. A strong, clean church attracts sinners. Instead, these churches are trying to draw in people from the world by trying to look like the world. Listen, friend, many a time those same people are sick of the world. They want out. If all we're offering them is a sanitized version of what they're already used to, it becomes self-defeating. These tactics may draw them in at first, but they will not keep them. What they need is the simplicity of the power of the gospel, be it in a barn where people are seated on straw bales. It will matter not, my friend. They want and need the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has been said that the church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy that it's hard to differentiate between the two anymore and how that true that seems to be becoming. It's not the decor but the undiluted gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. That's what they're looking for. That's what the world needs. That's what they want, even though they themselves might not realize it at the time. Sir, pastor, minister, leader, don't. Please don't water the message down. Don't. Please don't follow those other 
mega churches just because they're in America and experiencing such success numerically, which of course means more shekels in the till or dollars in the offering. Please don't follow them for those reasons. They may be called secret sensitive churches, emergent churches, or whatever other nomenclature they choose to go by, but they are not our role model. The Bible, the Word of God, and the New Testament church in the book of Acts, that is to be our role model. Our primary goal should never be the numbers. It should be souls, souls, souls winning the lost, whatever the cost. And then discipling, mentoring them to in turn unleash them into the world to bring more souls into the kingdom. That's how the kingdom of our God will be established upon this earth. The Lord Jesus Christ promised he would make us fishers of men. Instead, we are trying to experiment with different kinds of bait. I say that again. The Lord Jesus promised to make us fishers of men. Instead, we are trying to experiment with different kinds of bait in the vain hope that it will attract and draw people in and grow our numbers. You know online what they call that? Clickbait. You see something and the title says bombshell, must read, sensational. And we click on it to look and read or watch it and we find it's hollow, meaningless, misleading, a sham, a scam. That's what we call clickbait. You know what? Clickbait might actually succeed to some degree and get many uh, unthinking folk, undiscerning folk to click on it. So it can succeed to some degree, but I can assure you it will result in having our pews filled with a bunch of watered-down, namby-pamby churchgoers who, when challenges come, will most likely bail out as they are not rooted and grounded in the word of God. Do you know what I do with clickbait? I'm no exception. Sometimes I get fooled by a title, perhaps on, on YouTube. I may click on it. What I do when I find it was clickbait and deceptive and misleading, I block that channel. There's an option where you say, do not show me this channel again. Don't show me anything from that channel again. Now that's, is, is that what we want to do with people who come to our churches seeking the living Christ? They find out later on it was just clickbait, it was not life transforming, and then they leave never to come back again. Allow me to share seven things as, that we as the body of Christ really need to do and implement. Number one, we are to look. I started with looks. A 60-year-old minister trying to look like he's 24. We are to look like Christ. What do I mean by that? Simplicity, which stands in complete opposition to the kind of modern-day TV minister. Not every one of them, but many of them, a few of them at least. It stands in opposition to the kind of modern-day TV minister we started out describing. Simplicity, not ostentatious, not with numerous gold rings on multiple fingers, not wearing fancy bling robes or imp uh, having impressive titles. Rather, may our garments be these, as we read in Isaiah 61.10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. So number one, we are to look like Christ. Number two, we are to talk like Christ. Again, we do not speak with the words of man's wisdom, but we are to share the gospel with simplicity. The Holy Spirit will take over and quicken and anoint the precious word of God. Ephesians 4, 29, when we mention point number two, to talk like Christ. Ephesians 4, 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. So we're talking about wholesome, gracious, edifying speech. 
Number three of seven, we are to walk like Christ. Walk includes our conduct, our behavior, what we do, where we go, the company we keep, what our life's goals, ambition and drive are all about. Philippians 1.27 we read, only let your conduct, your behavior be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Number four of seven, we are to love like Christ, unconditional love, even love of those that hate and despise us. True, we may not like them or the things that they do or how they treat us, but we are commanded to love them, to love everyone. Now, not an artificial or pretend love, but as the scripture tells us, I read 1 Peter 1 22, seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love, that is not a pretentious love, genuine love, unfeigned love of the brethren, brothers, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Number five of seven, we're to serve like Christ. Yes, we are to wash one another's feet, so to speak. It may not be literally, but we should be the first ones to reach out to help our fellow man, to lay our lives down daily, not just for our Christian brothers and sisters, but for the lost also, in actions of love that will draw them to Christ. Matthew 20 verse 28 and Mark 10 verse 45, we read, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Number six of seven, we are to give like Christ. Give of ourselves, our time, our resources. In this way, we demonstrate that we literally love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We find that in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. We talked about number six being we are to give like Christ. Listen to the statement. Unselfish, sacrificial giving is a sure sign of genuine soul salvation. Let me repeat that. Unselfish, sacrificial giving is a sure sign of genuine soul salvation. And number seven of seven, we are to live or to be like Christ. To live or to be like Christ. When it's all said and done, if we do the above, it stands to reason that the world will take note. Just like they did of the disciples that, and I read from scripture, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled and ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. We find that in Acts chapter 4 verse 13, I quoted from the NIV on that instance. They were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. We are to live or to be like Jesus. Dear fellow Christ follower, this is what the world, this is what the world is looking for and what we need to implement and practice in our own lives. This is what will draw the lost to Christ by the shoals. The shoal is an old English word meaning a huge number of fish. So much so that our very nets will break, meaning we will not have enough room to accommodate the souls that come to want to place their faith in Christ. If you've been blessed and challenged by this, would you subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, like, share and comment below. God bless you.